Gospel music does have the potential to be entertaining. If you let yourself relax, you just might get a good laugh in before the repulsion gets to you. Let's have a listen to some of the lyrics that Christians use when they sing to their God, shall we? Change my heart, oh God. Stop there. We didn't get past the title of the song without a theological contradiction. Why should God change your heart just because you asked him to? Not only is the request of your prayer unlikely to be answered, but it seems to be an insult to the creator you're so bent on praising for his perfection. I guess something in your heart design needs work. Make it ever true. Oh, he gave you a dishonest heart. Well, that wasn't very considerate of him. But don't feel too bad about it. He hardened the Pharaoh's heart back in Egypt when his chosen people were being enslaved, causing them to follow Moses with an army at their heels into a tragic 40-year journey through the desert. <laughs> he could have just softened his heart and had him free the people to begin with, but I guess the Pharaoh would have had to pray through song like you're doing in order to get his heart changed, huh? I could be kind of human if I only had a heart. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. You want God to change your heart to be like him. I trust you're sticking with the metaphor of heart here, which actually refers to the emotional values of the brain. Now, I wouldn't want to inherit any of the Old Testament's God's personality traits or adopt his idea of love, but different strokes for different folks. You are the Oh, more fun with metaphors, kids! However, this keeps with the theme of God's initial creation of you being flawed. Wasn't he the metaphoric potter with you as his metaphoric clay the first time he created you? Now you're asking him to mold you and make you, meaning you can't be satisfied with his work the first time? Now in the pottery process, molded clay is fired in a kiln and baked to a solid form. You can't remold the clay once it's been baked. Of course, if it was God, I'm sure he could magically unbake the clay, but wouldn't it be easier to use Play-Doh or Silly Putty for this blasphemous metaphor to begin with? Let's move on to another tune, shall we? Again, according to your theology, wouldn't it have been God's will for the blind not to see, the mute not to talk, and the dead not to be alive in the first place? And if all hearts are praising God through himself, then isn't he just praising himself? I also take some serious issue with the word all there, because if you're predicting that everyone is going to praise God someday, let alone your God someday, I have to bust your optimistic bubble with the reality that there are these stubborn, non-God-praising folks that exist in places all over the world. They're called atheists! Through the darkness flees, through my heart screams, I am free. What exactly are you free from through your God? You never really address that in this song, which is titled, I Am Free. My greatest beef is that I don't know what you're free from, and if that freedom must come through your God, then it's a freedom I don't have. But when I compare the obligations that a religious person has with the requirements of church-going, tithing, praising, repenting, burdening excessive guilt for human nature, etc., all I see are added responsibilities, and I can't help but think that I'm more free than the typical religious zealot. I can run and dance too, but somehow I don't need your God to do it. Am I using some kind of loophole I don't know about here? Next! As morning dawns and evening fades, you inspire songs of praise. So God inspired this song of praise, but he didn't muse enough wisdom into the songwriter to inform him or her that fades and praise don't rhyme. From earth to touch your heart and glorify your name. 
So this song is about how this song makes God feel good in his heart because his name receives glory for the minute specks of life that he willed into existence. I sure hope it plans to explain why an intangible, immortal, omnipotent being would give a shit what you think of him. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Why are these Christians so horrendous with metaphors? How does the name God, Jehovah, or Yahweh have any connection with the strong and mighty tower or have any shielding properties? What does it do that a name like Brian, Sally, or Daniel doesn't do? Your name, let the nation sing it louder, cause nothing has the power to save, but your name. Earlier in the song, you said that these songs were meant for God. I don't even understand why you need to verbally manifest your thoughts to him to begin with, let alone sing them loudly. Doesn't he know everything that you think already? So if you love, care, and believe in him, doesn't he know that without you straining a single vocal cord? And what's up with loudly stating his name being the only thing with the power for salvation now? Christians usually tell me that accepting Christ's gift of torture is the only way to do that. You people really need to get on the same page. What is Jesus supposed to fill your heart with? Didn't he already allow himself to be brutally beaten and nailed to a fucking cross for you according to your religion? Now you want him to fill your heart with what I imagine is supposed to be love, but you don't explain what, how, or why. Then you ask the Lord to give you strength to live for him and glorify his name. But I'm very curious how you plan to do that. Do you want him to make you really strong in areas beyond your obviously awesome worship skills so that you can garner public attention through your various strengths, then give him the credit he deserves for it? If he didn't bother to give you the skills necessary to write a decent song for him, I wouldn't hold my breath hoping that he's going to imbue you with too many other strengths in the interest of his glory. I'm done with this one. That's the entire song, people. For several minutes, the congregation shouts enthusiastically among the mind-numbing repetition. This song almost needs that mind-numbing factor, though, lest you consider the actual lyrics. They're wishing that somebody's soul catches on fire and burns with the Holy Ghost. Now, I was under the strange impression for some reason that people of the Christian faith were bent on avoiding the whole burning of their souls. I thought that was the whole premise behind the let's try to go somewhere other than hell movement. I honestly have no idea what kind of metaphor the Christians were going for with this one, but I'd love to hear it explained. Now, Christians, your religion has been the catalyst for some incredible works of art throughout the ages, which was at least one thing to your credit. But with songs like these, I don't think you can expect to maintain much prestige in the modern world of arts much longer which is unfortunate for you, given how poorly you're faring in the realm of science. 